Langmuir Systems has produced a very capable CNC mill that easily pushes the boundaries and ability and budget that fits in a small garage or shop. It's important to keep in mind what this machine is, a DIY kit. What comes in the box is a very capable mill, but as a professional tinkerer, I can't leave well enough alone. Converting this was a bit of a challenge, but well worth the effort. Having complete control over the mill seems like it has unlocked a lot of capability. I am by no means advocating that everyone converts their mill. If you are not confident in being able to do it, please wait till there is more support or leave it as is. Alright, uh, here's the original Langmuir Systems MR1 CNC controller. Starting at the top right, we see the connector for the spindle control. To the left of that, we have a spare or unused connection right here. I assume this was going to be for the fourth axis that Langmuir advertised. Along the left hand side, are three connectors for the limit switches, flood coolant, and the Y1 and Z stepper controllers. On the bottom are two more connectors for the Z, Y1, and X, and the tool setter and touch probe. I suggest reviewing the link in the notes for what the pinout is. Uh, Alex W did all the legwork for pinout and gave me the confidence to start clipping all the wires on my own machine. I purchased his controller from CNC for PC. It features an Ethernet based controller that attaches to a breakout board for easy wiring and installation. It features way too many inputs and outputs for me to use. Most importantly, it supports six axes, 0 to 10 analog speed control, which is important for the Langmuir system spindle. It has three built in relays and it's what I'm most comfortable using to convert things to CNC. The major benefit of converting the MR1 is the near complete control you gain in utilizing your MR1. All the M codes are written in C sharp and easily modified to fit your needs. Thanks to ChatGPT and a large user base for helping me get my machine to operate how I want. You can also see that the power supply is rotated 90 degrees. This allowed for more room inside the enclosure. I also relocated all of my stepper drives. Uh, these stepper drives are also upgraded from uh, Stepper Online to have closed loop control. Uh, it's a very good upgrade. I suggest that you'll also see that I rotated the power supply 90 degrees to make room for the controller. Uh, there was no drilling required. Just rotate it 90 degrees and reinstall the screws in the provided screw holes on the other side. On the bottom are six outputs for motor controllers. In this case, it's pulse, direction, ground, pulse, direction, ground. Uh, the ground can be shared across the terminal. So pulse, ground, direction, ground. And then all the way across. On the right is the 0 to 10 volt analog speed sensor, or speed output right here. The Langmuir Systems uses 0 to 5 volts for control, so this is where adjusting the potentiometer down to a maximum of 5 volt output is required. Above this are three relays. These are used to turn on the spindle and flood coolant. Also we have 5 volt source and 10 to 30 volt source. Along the top, I have the inputs for emergency stop, limit switches, tool setter, touch probe, and error or trip signal for my servos. To power the controller, I'm jumping from, in this case, 48 volt to a buck converter. This is taking the input voltage and converting it down so I can run this controller on 24 volts. The whole conversion is less than 30 wires going from the old controller to the new one. If you plan everything out right and don't have too much head scratching, you can do this entire conversion in uh, one evening. By far the hardest part of this entire endeavor was figuring out the software and aligning all the... <laughs> Uh, wires to the correct ports and pins and getting everything communicating properly. I'm going to include a link to download everything that I've done. So it should be a matter of just downloading and installing and then there will be a 
small amount of troubleshooting under settings, general setup. Uh, all of this will be in the uh, software package down in the uh, comment section. The Langmuir Systems controller to the Hunyang VFD. So we might have to figure out how to uh, go backwards a little bit to uh, maintain your controller. UC CNC by itself seems pretty uh, user friendly to me. Uh, you've got multiple different stations to park your spindle. So if I press go to park one, it's going to go to the uh, home. And if I click park two, it's going to basically do the send to front command and bring it so that I can do a manual tool change. Uh, JSP jog safe probe. So if the probe is triggered when it's jogging, it will instantly stop. This is helpful when you're doing fast rapids and uh, the machine is trying to crash the probe. Uh, spindle clockwise, counterclockwise, mist coolant, coolant. Um, these are all handy. Zero all, zero is all the work coordinates. Safe Z just tells the machine how high up the tool needs to be to be able to move around safely without crashing in anything. Go to zero sends X, then Y, then Z to zero. And home all uh, triggers in order your Z, X, Y, and then nothing. So we've got main. Uh, over here we've got our jog control. I like to use my little pendant. Turn that back off. Come on. Uh, offsets for G54 through G59. I can program certain tool offsets because I've converted to ISO 20 tooling. One very handy feature about the UC CNC software is the probing package that it comes with. Um, what I really appreciate is the ability to probe something. Uh, I can zero my probed axes, so if I probe off of a corner, it's going to zero my X, Y, and Z. And then I can turn this off. I can reprobe to see the difference from one probe to the next and measure the, the uh repeatability. Also turning the probe 180 degrees allows me uh, to see how off my probing is uh, on the uh, complete other side. Page two we have a whole lot more canned cycles. So settings, axes, spindle, IO, Uh, hotkeys. Hotkeys is very handy. You can set up key codes, so keyboard functions if you're typing on a keyboard, and what that function does. So in here I can just set and scroll through this giant list of all the different options uh, to remotely control the software. So that's uh, settings. Diagnostic just tells me uh, where are all my limits are. And if they're triggered or not. Let's see if I can trigger. Uh, I can't because it's not connected right now. I forgot. Yeah. Alright, so yeah, right now the machine is disconnected from the control box because I just re just installed it. Okay, so diagnostics, cam, uh, not really sure how well this is gonna help me or anyone else. Uh, I think you can import a DXF or a vector drawing and tell it uh, to cut out that shape. 
list of supported G codes, 0 through 53, 54 through 90, uh, 99, and then supported M codes. Uh, there's actually a lot more than this. Um, so yeah, that's a really quick and dirty overview of the software. Alright, I hope this was helpful for you. Uh, let me know in the comments if you have any questions, uh, suggestions, or tips. And I'll see you on the next video. Bye.